Docker images are often much bigger than they have to be, which ends up impacting our deployments, security, and dev experience. Optimizing a build can be complex, as it's hard to keep your image clean, and eventually it gets messy and hard to follow. We also end up shipping unnecessary assets like tooling, dev dependencies, runtime, or compiler in our release. So in this video, we will understand how to build small containers using builder pattern and multi-stage builds. So here's the agenda. We'll look at our problem, some possible solutions, and some benefits we get. As we are already familiar with the problem, let's take an example. And I've created a very simple hello world in Go. Let's also see our very basic Docker file. Looks pretty standard, right? Let's build it. So docker build, give it a tag of default. Let's check out a hello world image. As you can see, it's over 800 megabytes, which is too much for a hello world image. Let's go back to our slides. So what's our solution? One simple solution is to use a smaller base image when we are building our containers. As we can see on the right, we have some examples. So instead of using full base image of Go, we can use the Alpine version. And similarly for Node, we can use a slim or Alpine version as well. This is great, but we can go much further. Let's discuss the builder pattern with multi-state builds. So what is builder pattern? Builder pattern simply describes a way to build your Docker containers by splitting the build process into two or multiple stages. This helps us reduce unnecessary assets from the production image. As we can see, the first image is a builder image, which basically builds our code by taking advantage by having all the necessary build utils. The second image is our runtime or release image, in which we will just copy over the build binary and deploy it, hence the size reduction. But wait, how does multi-stage builds fit in? Multi-stage builds just allows us to define all our stages in a single docker file as opposed to splitting into multiple docker files like we had to do before multi-stage feature was available. Before we proceed, let's see how all of this looks in a docker file. So I'll go over to my terminal and let's clear it and check our docker file. And as we can see, I defined two stages, one builder, one production and the production stage just copies over the build from the builder. Let's go back. And now I'm gonna build it. So docker build, tag it as multi-stage. Perfect, now let's check our image. And as we can see, we've reduced our image from 800 megabytes to just 12 megabytes, which is over a 50 times reduction. Let's go back to our slides. So TLDR, derive from a base image with whole runtime or SDK, copy our source code, install dependencies, produce build artifacts, and finally copy the build artifact to a much smaller image. Now let's look at the benefits. So the first one is performance. We will get faster push and pull from the container registry and small and optimized builds, which is really helpful when deploying new containers on Kubernetes. Second one is cost effective. We can now push our new Docker image with a fraction of cost and space required for the original. Here's an example. I was working with a small client and they had around 18 microservices. And if they're doing five deploy cycles per month, it would have costed them over 800 gigabytes per year. And now if we calculate for optimized images, it would be just over 27 gigabytes per year. Moving on, let's talk security. Security is an essential part of any application, especially if you are working in a highly regulated industry such as healthcare or finance. Smaller images reduce a lot of attack surface. Here's a quick scan from AWS CCR. As we can see, the default image has tons of security issues, but the multi-stage image has just one. Now this number can increase or decrease based on your code as well, but this is a pretty basic example. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.